Guys, I can't tell you um, how influential this next person that I'm going to speak about is on my life. If you were to say, Scott, who is your favorite musician of all time? One musician. I would not hesitate. I would immediately say Jimi Hendrix. Now, why? Well, you know, there's so many reasons that, you know, we could do a whole, I could easily do a whole course about Jimi Hendrix. In fact, maybe a couple, because in a three-year solo career, he packed in enough innovation as a producer, performer, guitarist, singer, songwriter, and, you know, also let's just add into that what he did with guitar equipment and effects. Um, he took the entire paradigm and pushed it to the limit. He learned first on what they used to call the Chitlin circuit, the R&B touring circuit in America. He used to live in Harlem, actually not far from where I live, and not far from where Charlie Christian lived. There was a little circuit in Harlem uh, that started in the you know, 20s, 30s, went up through the 60s, 70s. And you know Jimmy played with uh, guys I reference all the time, like Cornell Dupree and King Curtis. And I think you know, there were things about his guitar style that stood out. But when he got to England, and he got those Marshalls, and he got that Strat, and he heard Cream in person, and jammed with them, and he heard um, the Beatles and saw them, and he got the clothes, Carnaby Street and all that. It just became this moment where he transcended. And obviously the influence of, of Bob Dylan on his songwriting was another major element in his whole, um, his whole development as an artist. So Hendrix is my favorite artist musically, if you were to pin me down. Now, there are plenty of others who roll in right after. There's Miles Davis next, Ray Charles. You know, there's a lot. There's a long list of these single personalities, not bands, but these single personalities who were so important and transcendent that they changed everything that came after them. Today, I want to focus on a very specific album of Jimmy's and a very specific period of his life. This was actually the last chapter of Jimmy's life, the last year or so of Jimmy's life, he made a live album called Band of Gypsies. And when I was, you know, going back to when I was a kid, you know, running around trying to find these things I was hearing about from musicians or reading about in magazines or books about the history of American music, Band of Gypsies was not available in the United States in the late 80s. Uh, I was very young at the time uh, and had just started playing guitar. And I had all the Hendrix stuff. You know, you always had our experience, Axis Boulders, Love, Electric Lady Land. You could find those in every format. You could not find this damn record, Band of Gypsies, anywhere. So um, convinced my mom, I was probably about 11 or 12-ish, to order me uh, Band of Gypsies on compact disc from Japan. And it took uh, like a month or two for it to come to the Sam Goody record shop. And I went and got it, and it was in one of those big, clunky cardboard cutouts like they used to have. And um, I got it, and I got six songs, you know. I didn't know what I was in for. Put it on, and that, you know, who knows comes on, you know. And I'm going to tune my low E down to a D for this, but I'm not tuning the whole guitar down. Like, he used to tune down a half step or a whole step, depending. But, you know, like... <laughs> I mean, I was just so hooked, man. And then Machine Gun. And that was kind of like a religious experience for me. I mean, it's probably the closest you can get without taking ayahuasca with a shaman <laughs> musically is Machine Gun by Jimi Hendrix on the Band of Gypsies record. Um, as a guitar player, to me, it's the highest bar that's ever been set. I would put it up there with Charlie Christian and Wes Montgomery and Three Kings and every, everybody we talk about all the time. It's, it's as impactful on music. And it's, it's a film. It's, like, it's, almost like, uh, it's almost like, you know, Martin Scorsese, uh, you know, directed the guitar solo or something. I mean, it's like the perfect, the perfect encapsulation of that moment in American history. Um, 
you know, Jimi Hendrix was he was he he served in the in the Airborne Infantry and was a paratrooper. Uh, before he started his music career, he met the bass player Billy Cox on the Band of Gypsies record as a paratrooper. They met in the military playing in military bands. And the Vietnam War was at this, you know, this absolute sort of breaking point in the country with civil rights. You know, Jimi Hendrix as an African-American man, as a serviceman, the Vietnam War, it, it encapsulated so many things, I'm sure, emotionally for him that you can hear in the track. And the track is this, you know, 10 minute plus exploration that takes you through the horrors of war sonically and it paints a picture. And this is like kind of, I see as a musician, I see this performance as the highest bar um, as an improviser. And I, the greatest testament to that is when, you know, reportedly when Miles Davis heard this track Machine Gun for the first time, uh, he decided to change his entire style of music. So I've always liked to say, you know, if you can f up Miles Davis, you win. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a very impactful thing, and I, I was so grateful to discover it as a kid, and I basically just sat with that Jimi Hendrix CD, and I tried to protect it because I knew how expensive it was and how hard it was to get <laughs> at that time. And, but I just played with it forever and forever and forever and would just, you know, try to find those tones. And, um, you know, today I'm going to use my, uh, my friend, <clears throat> the Analog Man, uh, Analog Mike. I have his Sunface fuzz pedal here. And uh, I'm not a, a guy who's known for using a lot of pedals, but this is one of the most musical uh, distortion pedals, fuzz pedals, I've, I've ever discovered, the Sunface by Analog Man. And uh, we'll share a picture of the rig with you guys. And I have my Revival Drive to help push this deluxe and a, just a touch of reverb. And we're going to use the jam track uh, to, uh, to play through specifically uh, my interpretation of Jimi Hendrix's Band of Gypsies' ear of his tone. Um, and I'll also mention that uh, on YouTube, during, during last year, during 2020, uh, in September of 2020, when we were in New York City area starting to come out of this whole hellish period, uh, my band gathered outside to play a show in Woodstock, and uh, we took on the Band of Gypsies album as a whole, and my friend Jackson Speller came and sang a couple tunes, wonderful young talent. Uh, and I sang the rest of the record, and you can see that on YouTube. So uh, we were really proud of it. It's done a real cinema verite style, and uh, we tried to do our own little spin on the record. I felt like at the time, uh, you know, we were all pretty pent up, and I, th I think it was maybe our second or third gig back after having months off because of the, uh, the pandemic. Um, so you can check that out as kind of an addendum to this, like see a little bit more of my style, uh, you know, trying to interpret this in a way. Uh, but uh, there's really, there's no matching Jimmy, but uh, we're going to have some fun today and throw the fuzz pedal on and just uh, try to, you know, get this band of gypsy sound. 